Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Abbas. It's a pleasure to join this uh, uh, conference, uh, a well-known venue for, for language uh, uh, understanding and speech processing. Um, I, I will start presenting my, my slides in a minute. All right. Uh, please tell me if you can see my screen. Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so thanks, thanks for again for the introduction. Um, I'm a chief data scientist of EMEA for a company called Beyond Limits. And uh, uh, my, my speak today will be around uh, technology commercialization. Uh, I'm not presenting any technical um, talk about uh, natural language or speech uh, processing. It's more about, I would say, more business oriented, which I think is important uh, to start thinking of in, in our research communities. Um, as a background, I am, I am a scientist, but I, I went to uh, industry uh, recently. I want to promote the importance of commercializing technology and how to move from research to also product innovation, how we can use this technology to solve problems. So a word about the company, because actually the background of the company is, is the story of this actually. Um, um, Beyond Limits is, is a spinoff of um, a NASA uh, research lab called GPL, uh, which is uh, a collaboration between NASA and Caltech. Um, we, we took, um, uh, a bunch of IPs. Uh, the purpose of that spin-off or startup is uh, back to 2014, is to commercialize this technology and apply it to solve uh, um, uh, Earth problems, starting from, from space. Now, this technology that actually controls unmanned emissions in the space and Mars, how we can use this that's, uh, technology that spends millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, and start actually solving real, real problems uh, on Earth. The, the company got a lot of traction. We solved a lot of use cases, starting from energy sector. Um, we recently launched uh, uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa uh, offices, uh, uh, and we, we were named as the company of the year in cognitive AI. So today I, I will, uh, talk a little bit about research commercialization, and then I will link that to uh, an open innovation and uh, reproducible research, how we can get that in, in our research community. After that, I will um, present some examples in innovating products from natural language and speech processing. Uh, at the end, I will like mention also um, the role of a, a new trendy term, which is MLOps. Uh, which is very important in uh, productization of AI, including uh, speech and natural language uh, technology. So just a motivation, as, you, as everyone knows, there is always a lot of funds, uh, research, um, and the output is, is, is great. Unfortunately, not all of these, or only a little, is commercialized and actually applied in solving uh, problems. At the same time, there is a lot of industrial problems coming up, having big data, um, new innovations, IoT, that actually need research. Some of the research in the industrial um, companies don't have enough budget to make the research. It's always hard also for them to, to collaborate uh, and get license of this technology. It's the same thing in, in academia. They don't know that there is that much of, of industrial problems to be solved by their, uh, out, uh, their output of research. So the question I'm trying to answer here, can we better utilize uh, these research outcomes to solve these issues? And the importance of that, if we manage to have this link, which is uh, I'm, um, recently I'm, I'm, I'm witnessing a lot of these success stories, these could actually refund back the research and direct the research in a direction that actually uh, will bring more fund. 
so, so some forms of, of commercialization that actually uh, works well in, in this domain, in, including natural language and, and speech processing, is, is licensing, licensing agreements. Um, as, as you may know, it's, it's not easy to make a patent out of what we do in like mathematical equations because uh, it's, it's, not, it's not an industrial design that you can protect and uh, from reverse engineering. It's actually mathematical uh, expressions and algorithms that you cannot protect. Uh, even you companies or research centers, um, um, when they develop a new formula or publish a new research, um, after like six months, one year, with this very rapid uh, innovation and, and invention, it's become obsolete. Um, so this is, doesn't really apply uh, when to commercialize using this type of patenting. Usually companies doing, do research inside, but only big, big firms, and they keep it as a trade secret. Uh, another way to commercialize uh, research um, and again, I'm trying to, to focus more in, in natural language and speech processing is through APIs. And this is actually one of the successful models that some companies, including my, my previous one, Modu, actually to, and also you can see it with Amazon and, 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 and IBM and Google, they, they have this marketplace of APIs in which you can uh, consume as a service, you, you pay as you go model. Uh, and this is very important, actually, and a good bridge between um, having a new model, state-of-the-art models, and applying it as building blocks to build uh, uh, products. Uh, another good form is actually spin-offs, and, and Beyond Limits, the company I'm working for, is, is a good example, in which there is a lot of uh, tons of IPs there, and uh, you can take that uh, and make an exclusive license, uh, try to, to commercialize. And actually, uh, universities and, and research institutes have, have shares in such uh, spin-offs or startups. Um, another, another way I think it's, it's important uh, for both academia and industry is the concept of uh, open innovation. And I, I will speak more about this um, uh, just after this, this slide. Uh, but uh, also another a way of collaboration and actually bring problems to, to research institutes and academia is internships. Um, PhD students, for example, um, in their recent years, they can uh, summer go to a company and, and see uh, problems, try to map what they are doing in their PhD research to solve this problem and actually bring back some problems to their lab. So it also exchange programs um, among research labs, both in academia and industry, uh, plays a good role in commercializing and actually addressing uh, industrial problems with the outcome of, of our research. So, open innovation. A good, a good way to, to think about it, again, to, our, uh, to this community of natural uh, language and speech, speech recognition is, um, doing shared, shared tasks. Um, this is an, a very important uh, concept, actually. Uh, we tried it uh, before and it works very well. I speak more about it a bit. But also open data that usually comes with sharing or open a problem in a shared task attached to a conference workshop, for example. Uh, reproducible research, having um, open data, open source code, um, and actually op also open access to their uh, publications is very important. Um, and why, why you sh we should consider that in your uh, research lab or even in your uh, lab at the company is such problems that we are dealing with with language, it's very complex. Um, as you saw in the previous uh, keynote, uh, metaphor is, for example, is something still unsolvable. Language is a very one, one of the most uh, difficult problems to solve by AI. Still, I think it's not it's not solved. Even given a uh, new research with 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 BERT-like models, GBT is still the machine is actually doesn't um, reason like human when it comes to, to language. And this is something actually NASA and and our, uh, us in, in Beyond Limits trying to solve with a hybrid approach between human-like reasoning and 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 machine learning or data-driven solutions, and as well as knowledge knowledge based and semantic. 
uh, network uh, approaches. Um, so reusable research, uh, open APIs, uh, open frameworks like like uh, uh, TensorFlow and, and PyTorch is very very important. And as I said before, academic industrial collaboration. All of this, if you look at it, is is uh, what you can label as as open innovation. And this sh should be a strategy um, for everyone who works in the domain. Uh, once you are open, you are giving away may, sometimes uh, a little of your uh, data some, uh, when we make, for example, a shared task. But the gain you will get uh, from the community is actually tremendous. And this collective intelligence and collaboration could solve things that you cannot solve yourself. And it's, if you want to solve it yourself, it takes years and uh, a lot of money that no one can afford. And so So a little um, um, from my personal experience with, with shared tasks, um, as you know, everyone here, here knows, for example, about uh, Semivel as a workshop. It's actually a great, a great platform for natural language uh, understanding community. Um, and it helps some research institutes and, and, and as well as some industrial co companies to actually solve uh, problems. Uh, Kaggle and Codelab also as, as good platforms. Um, again, as, as personal uh, experience, we, we open uh, and organized some successful shared tasks. Uh, one of them actually was attached to um, this, this venue uh, two years ago, uh, which is an Arabic question to question semantic similarity task. And what happens in that very good experience, uh, we outsourced uh, open access 10% uh, of the data that we um, um, internally annotated and uh, define uh, an evaluation criteria and open it for the public. We had, we, we tried everything uh, internally. Um, surprisingly, the, the winning team or the, the top two come up with very, very interesting ideas and they were, they were students at the university. Uh, we, we bring that back to, to the original uh, bigger problem and we achieved higher accuracy and that goes to, went to a product in the company that's now becoming a competitive advantage. We even hired uh, some of these participants in the company. This, this was a very, very kind, very, very important, uh, um, I would say, use case in, in such uh, shared task and industrial academia collaboration. Another one we did recently with the Jordan University of Science and Technology was um, to um, open the same uh, similar shared task, but now for uh, multi-topic labeling in, in Arabic news. Again, we were very satisfied with the results. Um, uh, you, 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 it, when you are trying to solve a problem, uh, your, your space of searching an optimal solution is, is very wide. It's not easy to find, like a single person or a group of uh, scientists in, in a lab to find it themselves. When you open it, a lot of new ideas come in and you lose nothing, actually, you just, you just gain. Another good example um, about Arabic language understanding, we, we open sourced um, um, a shared, not an ongoing uh, task, uh, similar to GLUE, uh, I think uh, most of us here are uh, uh, familiar with, but this is specified, uh, specialized in Arabic. It's give you uh, a ranking, it's, it's automatically um, uh, uh, evaluate your language model um, across um, uh, many uh, benchmarks and open data sets and give you an overall average how good your language model is. I encourage every one of you to, to try that. And actually, this is, again, um, something we, we think can bring back um, not only for the company, but for the whole community. When, when we talk about open data and actually for this uh, news aggregation, uh, multi-label um, task, uh, you need to, um, to put your data somewhere. And these, these platforms uh, like Figshare and, and uh, Zenodo and others you can see here is a very good uh, examples where uh, researchers can go and, and bake some of the data, try out their, their, their algorithms and models um, compare and, and make it available for others to do uh, research in this uh, open innovation environments I, I, I just mentioned to you. 
for reproducible research, everyone knows, um, and it's now becoming more and more important in, in all other research communities, not only natural language and speech, speech uh, processing. Um, but if you have the data, for example, in Zenodo, your code published in, in GitHub and the, the paper is in archive, this is easy for others to reproduce and actually give back to the community. Uh, companies, uh, including big ones like, like Google, Facebook, Amazon, uh, doing that, uh, and this is bring back to their to them uh, research institutes and and, uh, and universities it's it's a, a good way for them to stay um, um, updated and um, um, not to be behind in the state of the art research because now they don't not not all research uh, institutes have the resources um, that other big big players in the market has. So this this data data open data they can access to, also the the, the source code uh, uh, will help them to advance the technology, see what they can do instead of starting from scratch. Another good way that helps uh, the community and and also uh, sure that most of you knows about hugging face. It's it's actually helping the community to advance very well publishing data and models and language models. It's it's a way, and I think it's a very successful um, approach that bridge the gaps between again from between academia, academic research, and industrial research. Um, uh, another good example of uh, a market a marketplace that. Um, um, Hassan Sawaf did recently is AI Explain. I also encourage everyone to, to check and see. This is actually comes a handy way to commercialize natural language processing and, and speech processing uh, technology and research. Because it's, it's always a, a challenge for a research lab to give, to give this, the, the output of their technology. If it's not like um, um, packaged, in a web surface, um, no one else will use it. Like, and it's, it's, a, it's a loss of uh, years of research. So such marketplaces, both for data and models is very important and I encourage everyone. I'm just here presenting a few examples. I'm, I'm sure there is, there is much more. That's, that was for the first part of, of my um, uh, talk. Um, I have three parts of them. This is the second one. Just want to provide some uh, also motivations about um, um, innovating products, uh, problems that actually needs uh, research and invention using uh, um, a natural language and speech uh, processing. Um, I will give you some examples that shows how we can make uh, problem abstraction as a way to invent and um, and transfer uh, algorithms in a certain problem to another use case and actually bring that um, as an added value in a product. Um, I, will, I, will, I will use an example from, from our uh, company right away and it, it could like, motivate you to think of uh, how we can commercialize what you already have in your research lab to some problems and we can start commercialize it, even licensing it making an open uh, access uh, uh, microsurface, or even make a spin-off, because such problems, when it's big, there's people can pay for that, and this can bring back to your research lab in a form of a startup. So value creation uh, is also, as, is, I think, as important as doing scientific research. And it's like a cycle or loop that we, which all of us uh, should think about. An example I, I want to, 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 to share with you about this problem abstraction and how we transfer things. Here is a, a problem uh, that we, we were dealing with recently in, in Jordan, which is actually the, the water uh, issue. Um, it's, it's becoming a, a crisis recently, and um, um, there is many, many reasons for that, but some of these reasons actually something we can control, like water leakage. So that the question that came for us, can we use AI and technologies that have uh, been developed at NASA, GPL lab, to solve this problem? So this is a problem and see 
it's, it's not an example for national language, but I just use it as, as a way how we can think of what we develop at the research lab for a certain use case, how we can migrate it. And, and here is the case. Um, um, maybe you, uh, you already heard about, about, about Katie. Yes, she, um, uh, she managed to make the first uh, imaging for a black hole. And, and that was a great success story in, in the research uh, at, at NASA. Uh, she's an MIT graduate. But how we bring that technology to the problem I just mentioned to you. So for, for that problem, um, we need to have the lowest number of telescopes and, and to know where to place them in, in order to get this whole image for the black hole. The, the, the naive solution would be have the whole Earth as a, as a big telescope or to have telescope everywhere. But this is, of, of course, uh, uh, infeasible in terms of investment. Um, so that algorithm that chooses the best places to, to uh, place these telescopes actually were used to detect uh, leakage in a big uh, uh, distribution network of water. And that problem is actually saving a lot of money, uh, buying a lot of sensors and there's sensors everywhere in the uh, water distribution network. So it's that kind of problem solving uh, systematically trying to map some uh, invention that's cost sometimes millions of, uh, of dollars to come up with, with algorithms could easily transfer and actually apply it to a problem and make it a product out of it and help uh, other sectors. Quick, quick brief about that, how this works. Um, in this example, instead of having 48 sensors in this very uh, small use case of uh, a network topology, having only five, but identify where to place them in the graph, actually provided very similar, uh, very similar um, um, accuracy in detecting where is the leakage. Again, that, that's an example, maybe it's not very relevant to um, the community here, but uh, very good examples, that's where we, uh, we have technology uh, come up with as, as product and companies. Uh, everyone knows about Grammarly, for example. Um, um, Qalam is also a new um, a startup that's has come up with um, three to four uh, years of heavy research in uh, Arabic NLP and NLU. Uh, also speech recognition and, and, and TTS technology to, text to speech. And we were trying uh, many models how we can commercialize that because if you don't commercialize this technology, you cannot keep running such investment in, in the private sector. So that was a very good model. Also writers, um, a, a writer is, is a company uh, in, like, uh, in San Francisco doing uh, uh, very similar, but for English. Um, and instead of like, selling APIs as a service, you can actually make it as a, as a product. And Qalam is an extension for, for Chrome, Firefox. It's also a, um, a mobile keyboard in which it, that helps you make some um, uh, spelling correction, uh, paraphrasing. Um, it can uh, tran uh, tran uh, translate your, your speech to text. It can read you the text uh, uh, to voice. And this is very handy and useful things. And uh, they managed to develop many use cases. They have now um, the clients and having re big revenues from the region. And because of that, the company could keep this research um, uh, efforts and investments. And we can see that uh, 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 not only re revenue, but also you come up with a new problems because users give feedbacks. And this is actually a good source of problem that the research lab is, 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 is very interested to get to, to, to know what to do next in the research. Another example in, in this natural language speech processing this is something we have at, at Beyond Limits is helping the first responders um, to communicate and react quickly in, in the field, linking uh, um, police stations, firefighters and, and healthcare with a handy-free conversational AI uh, solution in which you need actually to, um, to speak with an assistant, a digital assistant, uh, with your own language and understand and act and link you with, with the right uh, resource. I'll try to move faster, uh, given the time I have. 
Um, another good examples, and maybe it's links to the next session about sentiment analysis is, is uh, social media intelligence uh, and uh, how we aggregate also from, from the social media, how we can <coughs> apply uh, the national language processing techniques like entity recognition, uh, sentiment analysis, um, uh, semantic entity relationships, and word system ambiguation in a product that actually there is a demand in the market about. Uh, so um, a lot of like in, in intelligence and, and governments wants to, to know what the people talks about a certain figure or, or a certain decision done by the government to measure and predict um, any, any, uh, any possible frauds and also attacks, cyber attacks using uh, this language and social media that's actually bombing everywhere. Um, similarly, if you want to personalize the news for a person and you want to, to infer what's his or her interest, um, um, this is a, again an example from Arabic in the because I, I'm, I'm specialized on that, but it's, it, you can have millions, not millions, I would say hundreds of examples of successful spin-offs and startups uh, out of uh, such research. Uh, when we talk about commercializing NLP, we cannot uh, uh, forget about chatbots, uh, uh, smart IVRs and voice assistants. And these some examples, again, from the uh, Arab world, how uh, uh, they, they commercialize the research into such uh, uh, businesses and start making revenue and solve problems in the market. Again, this such proven revenue uh, motivated doing more research and advancing um, the interest of doing more in this under-resourced language, like Arabic. Um, machine translation as well, we have uh, a good example, uh, Canary AI, uh, which is, a, I think it's a, it was a good collaboration and technology commercialization from QRCI, um, uh, Tarjama, uh, doing a great work in, in utilizing um, Arabic uh, NLP in, in advanced machine learning, which is a translation agency that's actually uh, getting use of, of this. And again, the examples are unlimited. I just want to motivate the community here about the opportunity and some uh, by, by showing some, some good examples from at least from the Arab, Arab world. I, I don't think I have, uh, uh, Professor Abbas, do you have, I have how much time remaining? Uh, that is uh, the last section that it takes 10 minutes to okay, provide. You can, you can, you can have time. Time. Don't worry. Okay, um, when we talk about like having this, these machine learning um, technologies um, uh, or NLP, for example, you developed um, a state-of-the-art ASR model. Um, it's, it's not easy de developing a notebook or like uh, share the data and the code on, on GitHub. To have it actually running in a, in a, a product way, it's, it needs a lot of other efforts, what we call uh, MLOps. And uh, MLOps is a group of best practices uh, for businesses to run AI successfully in, in, their, um, uh, in the cloud, maybe. So we cannot look at it as only machine learning research. There is uh, another two cycles in which you need to develop, you need to collaborate with software engineering team, make it as a product, it's not an easy uh, journey. And then after this uh, uh, language models or like uh, web services you developed in a term of a product or even uh, APIs, it goes, you need to monitor and keep enhancing, advancing it take feedback from actual users and retrain your models. This, this chain of, of things is not an easy task and actually it's a very important and trendy topic right away. If, if you want to see how trendy is this important as a search keywords, you can see how it's uh, exponentially increasing as an importance in the recent uh, couple of years. So why, why it's important? Because without it, you cannot actually take uh, um, a model that a researcher developed in his or her laptop and actually put it in, in production. It's uh, maybe that only 10% of the whole cycle. Uh, you need data engineering, you need uh, DevOps, uh, testing, uh, releasing. It's, it's a complete uh, framework um, that's not only uh, software frameworks needed, but also team structure. I will move quickly on that. And this is just to show you 
uh, how a typical machine learning pipelines uh, runs in, in, in the industry. And I think if, if research institutes would like also to outsource or spin off their technology in a form of web services or APIs, they should follow these uh, uh, frameworks. Luckily enough, we have uh, tools and workflow orchestrators that helps uh, such researcher, data scientists, and NLP uh, speech recognition uh, researcher to, to have such capabilities uh, and keep growing their, their models and, and monitoring it. Uh, I will talk quickly about Qflow, MFlow, and Argo as an example. Um, usually, um, um, as, as scientists, we'd like to stay away sometimes from uh, software engineering, but uh, I'm sure that each a university or a research lab can have access to uh, software engineers. If not, uh, there is a tool that uh, helps you to um, have a Docker version of your model. And then uh, uh, thanks to some open source uh, frameworks like Kubeflow, this could go to could, uh, in a scalable way uh, to production. And luckily enough, uh, cloud providers like Azure, Google Cloud and, and AWS uh, provide some access to and free tiers to research labs to, to do that. Um, another, another good framework uh, helps you to track uh, your projects and models is MFlow. Um, some of these, again, could appear uh, difficult, but a new open source uh, uh, frameworks like Argo and Jenkins makes it easy and easy by time to everyone to, to know about this MLOps and, and use it. Just quickly, uh, another good uh, tool that I recommend um, is uh, Evently AI. It's a way to um, help you to detect uh, uh, machine learning model drifts and data drifts in production. Because uh, as, as you know, uh, what you trained your model on, for example, let's say sentiment, sentiment analysis in a certain period of time could change because new terms are evolved. And what's you train, your model is not uh, uh, as good as the time you, you prepare it. So such tools uh, helps you to detect these drifts and act and retrain uh, when, when needed. Finally, uh, uh, having, having uh, AI or let's say natural language models in, um, in production uh, needs a special team structure for your MLOps team. Um, uh, there is no much time to, to describe this framework, but I, I, I uh, motivate every one of you who wants to take this uh, strategy to, uh, to take your technology to production, use this uh, list framework in which whatever you are developing here in small uh, sub teams, let's say a team working on a technology for um, ASR, another team works on a, a technology for word system disambiguation. And these APIs or, or web services are actually used in a bigger product, for example, uh, a digital assistant. So they get the requirements uh, periodically from, from such uh, bigger uh, uh, products from the product owner, and they keep updating their backlogs, delivering in a way that the final product is actually up to date and competing. Of course, research cannot go in this uh, scrumming uh, criteria. Usually it starts with a Kanban board in which you initiate the first uh, or minimal working uh, uh, model. But after that, to take it to production and use the, your model in production, you, you need to have um, like a time-bounded uh, development cycle to enhance and keep uh, developing your, your models. Um, to conclude, um, just to, to, the message I want to share here is there is a big opportunity um, um, to also think of utilizing what we already have as research. And this is very important from my point of view to keep the research going. Otherwise, the, the resource funds can, can, like, um, can finish, especially when, when you talk about private sector that they, they looks into uh, profit. Um, and also this will help research institutes, even if they have government uh, uh, fund, to know what are the problems that can actually solve bigger problems. For example, uh, as I showed you, a water leakage problem in, in a country like Jordan. And finally, uh, this uh, ML of techniques, I, I motivate everyone who's interested to move um, uh, his research or technology to production is something that you should think of as, as a team structure and as uh, some uh, utilizing some open source uh, frameworks to, to do uh, and, and have a scalable AI products. 
with, with that, I, I thank you very much again, uh, Professor Abbas, for inviting and also Dr. Uh, Abdel Hakim. And I wish you all the best.